Okay, everybody, no headphones, everyone's looking up here. This should be old news, how to find a range given a domain. Does everyone remember that domain is X, right? Real quick, uh, before that, I should have said, uh, you have a test next Thursday. You want to turn in all your unit to work. Okay, did you turn in last week's warm up? If you were absent Friday, make sure you put absent on the days you were absent and turn it in. Now, if the X, the domain is one, two, and three, then you're going to replace the X's in that function with one, two, and three. Okay, so F of one, so you replace X with the first one. And you're going to rewrite it with a one in parentheses. So F, sorry, so instead of five X minus two, it's five parentheses one minus two over two. And we should be able to do that similarly with two and three, right? So F of two, five parentheses two minus two over two. F of three. 5 parentheses 3 minus 2 over 2. So you should be able to substitute, and then the second step is to do the math. Now, you can do the math, uh, let's see here, by substituting in and uh, plugging it into Desmos. So you could just take the right side of that equation, five parentheses, one parentheses, minus two divided by two. You could just type those into the right side into uh, Desmos and evaluate it, or you can do it using PEMDAS, order of operations, okay? Uh, highly suggest using Desmos at least to check your answer in case, but this is what it would look like. If you're gonna type it in, you have to put the top in a big parentheses, okay? Here's what I mean. Uh, if I try to do like five parentheses one minus two, and then I hit divide, it's only going to divide the last number, the last term. So you kind of have to put the whole top part in parentheses like this. The five parentheses one minus two, put that in one big parentheses, and then hit divided by two. Then it will make it a big fraction. Okay. So we end up getting 1.5. If I replace that with the 2, I get 4. If I replace that with the 3, I get 6. So 1.5, 4, and then 6.5, I should have said. Okay. So do you see how that works? Replace x, substitute. Plug it in, you can use Desmos or PEMDAS. Now, our notes today are very similar to this, which is stuff we've already done. So this might seem like redundant, but it should be very familiar. Okay, stick with me, no headphones. You don't need to be on a Chromebook at the moment, so make sure those Chromebooks ain't open, please. This will be short and sweet. Here we go. All right, so everyone's looking at this. You have your learning intention, success criteria there. Let's write this down, ready? A function can be thought of as a machine. You plug something in, you get something out, okay? That for every input x, there is a unique, specific output why? To evaluate a function for a given value, you will substitute that value for the variable and then use order of operations. Okay. 
order of operations is the PIM de, PIM DOS stuff. Okay. So what's here? F means a function. X is your input. F of X is the output. The Y. And over here you have your expression that you're going to evaluate when you replace X, when you substitute. Okay. All this is stuff we've been going over, so a little more of the same. Okay. At the bottom, we're going to re-remind ourselves what is order of operations. What is PEMDAS? Uh, if you look up here, we last did that, 814. That's when we learned it, at least. 813, 814. Okay. I'm going to move this down. Does anyone still need the top part? Bro. Okay. So... For the P, for PEMDAS, y'all remember that's parentheses? E stands for exponent. M slash D is multiply and divide either one of those from left to right. Both multiplying and dividing. Then you add and subtract, both adding and subtracting. from left to right. A very important. First we do anything in parentheses, then we knock out any exponents, then we do any multiplying and dividing, either one from left to right, then we do any adding or subtracting, either one from left to right. Okay. That is order of operations. That's what we're going to use. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, you could just type the expression part in Desmos to get the answer or to check your answer from order of operations. Okay. Here's an example printed on the page for you, right? We have a function. Notice how it didn't use the letter F. That's okay. You can have F functions, H functions, G functions. Any letter can be a function. And then any letter can be a variable on the inside. So see how this is H of M instead of F of X? That's okay. Because all that matters is, is M over here? And are we going to replace it? So when it says H of 4, replace that M with a 4. So that's step one, substitute. Y'all see how that M turned into a four? No big deal. Step two, now you're using PEMDOS to evaluate this right here. So P for parentheses, inside the parentheses, we have a four plus eight. Can we add four plus eight? Yes, we can, we get 12. There is no exponent here now. The last thing we gotta do is multiply and divide. Two times 12 is? 24, okay? This is an example that you can look at on how to do this. You replace the variable with what you're evaluating it with, and then get your output. Put in the input, get your output by using order of operations and or Desmos to evaluate. So let's do some examples in the back. Everyone's on the back. Go ahead and flip it over. Here we go. Top left, f of 3 means this 3 is going to go right there where the x is, right? So I'm going to rewrite it, f of 3, f parentheses 3, equals negative sign 3 minus, and instead of x, I'm going to put 3, because I'm evaluating it at 3. Cool. Now, could you do order of operations to solve that? So what is P, parentheses, inside 3 minus 3? What's that? A 
I think everyone knows 3 minus 3 is 0, right? So to get rid of this, or to evaluate that, we get 3 minus 3 is 0. Now we just have negative 0, which is the same thing as just 0. Okay. There really is no such thing as negative 0. It is worth it. Okay, same idea on the top right. And this, is, this should be very familiar with our warm-up today. But um, g of 3 means replace x with 3. So g of 3 equals... Now, when I replace g, the x with 3, I'm going to replace it with a parentheses 3. Negative parentheses 3 plus 1. Now, negative parentheses 3 means negative 3 plus 1. And use Desmos if you're not sure. Negative 3 plus 1 is not 4. It's not negative 4. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Okay? You can, you're allowed to use a Desmos calculator on the Chromebook. I'd rather you not use your phones because you want to get used to what you can use on the EOC. Cool? So the next two should be more of the same. 0 goes for T. F of 0 equals negative 3 minus 0. 3 minus 0 is, in parentheses, 3. Negative 3 is negative 3. Do you see how this works? You, you replace, and then order of operations. Parentheses first, then exponent, then multiply, divide, then add, subtract. Last one, negative 9 is going to replace the R now, this is kind of weird. H of negative 9 equals negative, and then R is negative 9 plus 1. What is a negative negative 9? What does a double negative do? So a negative negative is like a plus. Makes, makes it positive, right? They cancel each other out, basically. So if you see a negative, and then you have another negative, now it's just regular old 9. Positive 9 plus 1 is 10, right? All right, cool. That's the idea for the notes. Now, technically, you have tomorrow to finish this, but this seems kind of, this might seem kind of easy, okay? So you could just knock it out today and then work on any missing work. Uh, I'm going to grade all the missing work from yesterday and today, sorry, Friday and today. That way tomorrow I can give you a new updated grade. Hopefully your corrections and everything makes you passing so I don't have to contact home. Right? So make sure you're getting, taking care of business. All right.